Ron Higgins with Nodal.com and the Times Picune. And it's time for the Saturday morning edition, April 11th, of the first cup of coffee. The first thing that comes to my mind every morning when I get out of bed and what to talk about. And this morning it's the SEC Network. I guess it's a subject fresh to me because I put a column online Friday night about the SEC storied documentary on Shaq and Dale, directed by Hannah Storm of ESPN. Comes on Monday for the first time at 8 p.m. on the SEC Network. Network appears plenty next week on SEC Network and on ESPN. Uh, Hannah Storm did a great job of this documentary outlining the lifelong friendship between former LSU star Dale uh, Shaquille O'Neal and former LSU coach Dale Brown. And it got to me, th- me to thinking about the SEC Network. And I get asked all the time since I've covered the SEC for more than 30 years what I thought of the SEC Network and the job it's done since it came on the air last August. And there's been pluses and there's been minuses. Uh, The pluses, what I like is the immediacy of live coverage of events. Just this past week, uh, Kentucky's seven players declaring for the NBA draft, that press conference. The Avery Johnson announcement at Alabama, that press conference as uh, as head basketball coach was simply amazing because Avery, of course, an ESPN analyst, is made for TV and he just comes across the, the screen great. It was one of the best press conferences uh, to announce a head coach I think I've ever seen. Uh, something else that the, uh, the the SEC Network does really well are the are these SEC story series uh, uh, of documentaries. I mean, this Shaq one uh, is the latest in probably ten to fifteen that have been done. They started doing these before the SEC Network was even a network. They started doing these in September two thousand eleven. Uh, they've, they've covered some great subjects, such as Herschel Walker, Lolo Jones, uh, Chucky Mullins, uh, 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 Charles Barkley, uh, and, and the Auburn crew. I mean, just a lot of really good stuff, and they do a great job with these documentaries. It's, it's one of the best things they do. And the Shaq Dale one is just the uh, first of a, a, a group of four that are uh, be making debuts over the next few weeks. I mean, following that, you, I mean, there's a... a There'll be a uh, one on, uh, let's see, on uh, Bernadette Locke, Kentucky assistant women's basketball coach, who assisted the men's program uh, a, a, a decade or so ago. Her effect on the men's basketball as a women's coach. There's also one on Dominique Wilkins, uh, former Georgia player, uh, and, and how he made the transition to college. And finally, one on Thunder and Lightning. Of course, Mississippi State baseball fans know them as Will Clark, former uh, New Orleanian, and Rafael Palmero, I mean, two of the greatest players on the same team in SEC baseball history. So that, that one's coming up on May 4th. So the next few weeks is full of great documentaries on ESPN SEC Network. But going back to the SEC Network, what it does, good, good and bad, uh, the, one, the one drawback I hear is that there's not enough, you know, events really live on the – SEC Network main channel. Now, they have an alternate channel they use, and they'll use it, I mean, actually use it today for to whip around to spring football coverage. There's three spring football games that you'll see today parts of. Uh, and next week, LSU will be part of that coverage of this spring game, not, not the whole game. I know the, the biggest gripe I hear is that, that there's not enough live baseball uh, on the SEC Network Particularly, you, don't, you haven't seen LSU very much. And for people who are used to seeing LSU baseball almost every other game on the Cox Network, uh, it's been hard. I know, in particular, my father-in-law, who loves to watch LSU baseball, he's not savvy enough to go to a computer and watch uh, it, you know, SEC baseball and LSU baseball on ESPN+, Plus, which is what they put the, their games live on the computer. He's not savvy enough to do that. And there's a lot of baseball fans like that. I would hope that they would put more games on the SEC Alternate Network, which is the channel. There's two channels of the SEC Network, and they hardly ever use the Alternate Network. So I'd like to use that, see that museum more also. But all in all, the SEC Network has been a, a great addition to, uh, you know, for, the, uh, for the sports fan, particularly here in the South, where you can't get enough of the SEC all year, particularly in football, which is why a lot of stuff is football-driven, football-based. Uh, I mean, from the... Uh, from the coverage in the fall to the uh, going to the campuses and doing the shows in the morning to uh, the, the post-game coverage to the, the breakdowns every other day, it seems like, of SEC football. 
Yeah, SEC basketball did a nice job on that. I thought they had some good, good analyzation on the SEC basketball. Overall, I give the SEC network uh, an A. I think they've done well. Uh, I feel sorry for Paul Feinbaum. He works four hours a day on radio, and and uh, that's a tough go to be on four hours a day and try to keep a conversation going. So he definitely earns his money. All in all, SEC network, good job. This is Ron Higgins for Dilla.com and Times Picune, and that's the first cup of coffee. We'll see you tomorrow.